It's almost the Stanley Cup final, so you know what we gotta talk about. The Leafs! Leaf fans, you stoked about having the first overall pick? I know I am. I was literally running around. It's documented on video. And because Leaf fans are excited about that, there's this whole Austin Matthews versus Patrick Line conversation, and Steven Stamkos has crept into a lot more conversations lately. Are the Leafs gonna get him? I think his chances went up. Some even going as far to say, do you think the Leafs will make the playoffs next year? And you know what? All fun conversations to have, for sure, for sure. Let me ask you something, though. Who's your goalie? It's a rebuild, so everything is up in the air, but especially with the goalies, it's very uncertain for the Leafs. Let's look at it. Specifically, what is it going to be next year? And we can obviously say they will go with a tandem of Jonathan Bernier and Garrett Sparks, but that's boring because that just means things stay the same, so we'll save that for last. So who could they get? Who's available? Okay, the Leafs could just sign a free agent. They'll get an unrestricted free agent goalie and he'll be great! That's a great idea. They already got one free agent goalie, Kashimir Kashkiswo. He'll probably be with the Marlies most of next season. I'm just on generalfanager.com. Let's look at some of the names of the unrestricted free agent goalies available. Uh, Cam Ward? No, well, no, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, Jonas Hiller? Uh, okay, let's keep going. Kerry Ramo? Nicholas Backstrom? Hey, oh, not the guy who plays with OV. Okay. Uh, James Reimer. There's our first good name. I was about to say, you can make an argument that James Reimer is the best UFA goalie available this summer, and I'm not going to say that because it's not an argument. He's definitely the best available. In fact, both Reimer and Ben Scrivens are unrestricted free agents. Bring 2013 back minus all the dumb stuff. But it just kind of shows the list isn't very wrong. I see Jonas Enroth on that list too. He mentioned he was sort of unhappy with how LA used him. Maybe he could be an option. But the most popular name on this list, at least when it comes to Leafs trade rumors, Frederick Anderson with the Anaheim Ducks. And you know what? Frederick Anderson's a pretty good goalie. Pretty good goalie putting up good numbers with the Ducks. Uh, in terms of that, idea for the Leafs? I hate it. I hate it a lot. Here's why. You have to trade something to get Frederick Anderson because he's a restricted free agent, unless you sign him to an offer sheet, I guess, but then you're giving up picks if you sign an unrestricted free agent for free. But more importantly, the Leafs have done this before. They have traded for restricted free agent goalies and signed them to contract extensions before they ever played a game for the Toronto Maple Leafs, and they got them from Californian teams, and the last two goalies to do that were Jonathan Bernier and Vesa Todd. Started with the Sharks, then you went to the Kings. You gotta get the Ducks to make it a trifecta. Now, of course, Anderson is 26 years old. He's an established NHL goalie. He's farther along in his career than Bernier or Toscala were. <sighs> But I'm freaked out by that stuff. I'm a Leaf fan. I gotta be a little superstitious. Tell you what, let's get off this depressing train and look at other options. You look around the league and you look at weaknesses, and by weaknesses, I mean teams that need help financially, specifically with the cap. You know who's doing pretty well right now, but when it comes to the cap, they are pretty screwed, especially when it comes to next year? The Pittsburgh Penguins. Right now, Matt Murray is going full 2006 Cam Ward. He's a 21-year-old leading his team into the final four of the playoffs, and he's not even on the last year of his contract. If the Penguins wanted to, they could have a starting goalie who makes 620 grand next year. The problem there is Marc-Andre Fleury makes 5.75. Now I can't help but look at that situation and go, uh, you know Pittsburgh, Leafs could help you out. That depends on a couple things. One, any other moves that the Penguins make to get out of this situation, and two, whether or not they trade Matt Murray, which I, I, I can't imagine why they would. He's a young, cheap goalie who's doing amazingly. So it partly depends on the Pittsburgh Penguins' appetite for this. It also depends on Marc-Andre Fleury's appetite for this because he's got a full no-movement clause and a no-trade clause where he can pick 12 teams he doesn't want to be traded to. Now, opinions on where you do or don't want to go, that could change. And I guess we are forgetting the most important factor in all this. What's the Leafs' appetite? Because I look at a move that could potentially help the Penguins next season and onward. Jonathan Bernier for Marc-Andre Fleury, and you throw some other goofiness in there, but there's your starting block. Not to mention that once Fleury is off the books, you don't have to protect him for the expansion draft. It's just something, it's just some food for thought. I wonder if it's something that the Penguins consider. I wonder if it's something the Leafs consider. And then, of course, here's your next option. You go with the tandem of Garrett Sparks and Jonathan Bernier for one season. For most of the back half of the season, Jonathan Bernier proved that he's still Jonathan Bernier. He's not that bad. Oh, oh, he started the season brutally and kind of forgot how to play goalie for like two months. It was really super weird, but he got it back and he can be good enough. Garrett Sparks, on the other hand, had a bit of a rough first stint in the NHL, but 
He's 22. He's pretty young for an NHL goalie. And and actually, not to mention there, Antoine Bebo is currently the Marley starter in the AHL playoffs. I wonder if he gets some looks too. Plus, there's that trifecta going on of Sparks, Bebo, and now Kaskiswo, who just signed. I don't think he signed with the Leafs to be stuck in the ECHL. And then maybe, maybe, if he has a good season, you can find someone to take Bernier as a rental. You know what? One last one, just because we're getting silly. He's got one season left at 5.95 million, Ben Bishop. Steve, shut up! There is no way the Lightning are gonna give up a Vesna nominee, especially to a divisional rival, and can you imagine what the Leafs will have to pay? Look. Tampa's got some really hard decisions to make over the next few seasons. What's going to happen with Stamkos? you got to re-sign Victor Hedman. And then there's this whole Ben Bishop versus Andre Vasilevsky thing. What's going on there? I wonder if he's available. But even if he is, why the Leafs if you're the Lightning? So look, I throw this all out there just so we can have the conversation. I just see so many people going, here is exactly what next year is going to be like for the Leafs. How the heck do you know what it's going to be like when you don't even know what it's going to look like? How do you even buy a jersey for a Leaf goalie right now? Do you just have a bunch of question marks across the nameplate and the number is this? So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really like to tell all your friends. There's a card around here somewhere for you to click. I've been doing videos on the Marley's playoff run. And there's been all sorts of other videos I've done. You should check those out. And this will be a very fun video to look back on when the Leafs sign James Reimer. Forever. And always.